we break the bread of life. Our Father and our God, we give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you for the opportunity that you have afforded us to be able to stand here today. If it had not been for you being on our side, none of us would be here. We would have died in our sin. We would have been forgotten. We would have been bound. We would have been sick. We would have been lame. We would have been blind. We would have been deaf. But Father, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are standing here, hallelujah, in liberty and freedom. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we acknowledge your presence. God, I pray for open heavens and that the anointing will be fresh on my life. Think through my mind. Speak through my lips. Let there be none of me, all of you. Bless our time together. Let no one leave like they came in Jesus' name. Father, I give you praise for doing what you have done for us, but we're anticipating in 2016 that this is going to be a history-making year. We are standing in front of history makers, change agents, trendsetters, difference makers, and I thank you, God, that Hallelujah, your word is going to activate um, purpose and your plans will come to pass unhindered. This is our year. Hallelujah, this is the year that you're going to restore what the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar had taken from us, had destroyed. It's going to be a year of restoration. Hallelujah, bless us now. And Father, let signs and wonders follow the preaching of the gospel in in Jesus' name, amen. Before you take your seat, can you announce to the person on your left and right that this is the last day you're going to see me in this state? Can you just announce to them? This is the last day. This is the last day. This is the last day you'll be able to address me like you address me. This is the last day you're going to overlook me. This is the last day. This is the last day. Everything about our lives are going to be changed for the best. Everything. Nothing is going to remain the same. If you believe that, give God a thunderous applause. Give him a thunderous applause. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may take your seat. We, we, we did bring some resource materials very quickly when kingdoms, heaven invades earth. And we did this power and principles for prayer. And this is really, really um, an incredible book. And it's going to supplement uh, the message this morning. We also bought the rules of engagement for overcoming your past. This is not the rules of engagement for spiritual warfare. This is the rules of engagement for overcoming your past. And then we did bring declare your home and family blessed. We bought that. And then finally, I'm hanging on to this one. This is my favorite um, out of all the books that I wrote. This one is Discover Your Strength in Hard Places. It's called Prevail. Uh, problems don't come to define you. They come to refine you. And it's a very powerful book. And uh, we're going to speak a little bit about this on Tuesday at the, um, uh, the, the Economic and Business uh, Forum. We're going to speak a little bit about that. But it's an incredible book. And our, at our resource table, I've learned not to say tape tables. Um, it dates me. We don't have tapes anymore. Uh, but at our resource table in the back, um, it, it, we, we do have all of these resources. Amen. And I should be a blessing to someone. And um, prophetess, let me give you prevail. Amen. And uh, I, the, the gentleman, he and his wife, um, I believe that God is going to do more things for you and with you. And I see uh, a spirit of entrepreneurship hitting your family. So I want to be a blessing to you. You testified early today, and I want to be a blessing to you if you can come. And if you can run, that will be helpful. Amen. Amen. Some people run slower than others. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. And then for two visitors, I want to bless you with this on behalf 
of Apostle and Prophetess Robinson. I want to give this to you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. God bless you. And God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Those of you that are visiting, if you're not a member of this house, would you please stand? It's always great. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much for being here. And um, we, we, we bless you on behalf, again, of Apostle and Prophetess. Thank you for hanging out with us. There are so many places that you could have been, but you decided to hang out with us. And we appreciate you so much. And we pray that over the next three days you will be with us. And this will not just be the last time you will be here. Um, this is an incredible church. And whenever you have an opportunity or free time and your ministry is not uh, doing anything, uh, you are always welcome here to be a part of this family. Amen. Always welcome. Let's go directly to the word of God. I'm, I'm very excited about this word. And I wanted to take the month of January to really uh, reinforce something that blessed my life. I believe this message is going to revolutionize your life. I sat where you sat, and I didn't always understand uh, certain concepts. And um, I was a little frustrated because I felt uh, as if uh, what I'm about to preach, it was being preached as if it was another offering. And so I became a little like resistant in my spirit because um, I, I believed in the concept, but how it was, was presented um, just offended me. I felt offended. I felt as if uh, someone was trying to get over on me. And the Lord cautioned me and I went back into the word of God to excavate it, this concept. And it revolutionized my life so much that I had to respond immediately. And um, I'm, I'm believing that once you get this concept and you really understand what God is doing with us during this season in the body of Christ, you will embrace the concept as a principle that you would want to apply immediately. Let's go to our text for this morning. I'm going to be braiding it with another text from out of the book of Hebrews uh, chapter 11. But before we get to Hebrews chapter 11, would you turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew 6, Matthew chapter 6. And we'll give you an opportunity to find that. Again, Matthew 6, and for the intent of this particular message, Matthew 6, 33 and 34. And then I'm going to braid it with Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. Hebrews 11, 1 to 4. We've heard about faith. And I think we just throw the word faith um, amongst all of the other concepts, not knowing that faith has many different dimensions. If you are writing, I want you to write this down because we're going to start building on this. You have a law of faith. You have the gift of faith. And the gift of faith is given to you. Um, it's, it's a gift. You, 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 don't work the, you don't work faith up. Faith is given to you as a gift. Number three, you have the, the fruit of faith. Number four, you have the, not only the fruit of faith, dimensions of faith. And then number five, you have the realm of faith. Hebrews chapter 11 is referring to people who actually lived in the realm of faith. That everything that they did was put on automatic pilot. Even if they didn't understand an instruction from God. They embraced it, and they start walking it out. They, they, they didn't consider, in a lot of instances, what people felt about them, what people thought about them. They got a word from God. They embraced that word, and they walked that word out. Faith. Faith brings you into the realm of God. And this is a realm of unlimited potentiality and possibilities. 
The Bible says, now the just shall live by faith. I want to announce to you that your struggles are over. In 2016, you will not struggle any longer as God activates us into realms of faith. Now, it's interesting because when we give you our context, and this is important, the context that we're going to preach out of is the context of faith. If your context is wrong, then your application of a concept will be wrong. And it will lead you to frustration. And if you are living in the realm of frustration, there will be no manifestation. And this is where we find in 2016, the average believer is frustrated. We have given all. We have trusted you, God. We have believed you, God. People gave us words, and we are still waiting for those words to come to pass. And so the average person is indifferent. You come to church, and the word, you hear the word, but it's like pouring water on a duck's back. We're afraid to believe any longer because we don't want to be disappointed. But I'm telling you, your days of disappointment are over. Over. Even as I stand here, I know what you're going through. I know what you've been through. Why? Because I sat where you sat. I sat many, many years sitting indifferent. I was afraid to believe another prophetic word. I was afraid to apply another scripture because year after year I gave, year after year I believed, and I never saw the manifestation. And then then God revealed to me November of last year. He said, Cindy, many people are not seeing the manifestation because what they're doing, they're not doing it by faith. It's perfunctory. They're just doing it. If they get the right uh, musician and the right preacher, hallelujah, preaching in the right key, they get emotional. And then when their emotions are turned on, uh, they run and they act perfunctorily, but when they walk out, they haven't wrapped their faith around an act. But this is the last day that the enemy is going to seduce you out of your blessing. 2016 is going to be a year of blessing, a year of breakthrough. It's going to be your most incredible year. If you believe it, shout, I believe you. Some of you need to believe it. And even if you're sitting here and you're not too sure, hallelujah, about my intention of motivation, I understand. But if you just give me the next three days just to pour out, hallelujah, the word in you and build your faith, hallelujah, I promise you, according to the word of God, that your 2016 will look nothing like your 2015 or your 2014 or your 2013. This is going to be your best year. Not only your best year, it's going to be a good year for your children. It's going to be a good year for your grandchildren. It's going to be a good year for your husband. It's going to be a good year for your business. It's going to be a good year for your ministry. I prophesy into the womb of 26. This is our year. This is a history-making year. If you believe it, shout, I believe you. Amen. So our context is the context of faith. Amen. Let's look at our concept that we want to introduce you to. Matthew 6, 33. Matthew 6, 33. The Bible said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God wants you to have things. The Bible said the secret 
things belong unto God, but those things which are revealed belong unto you. You've got to get a revelation of the things that God wants you to have. The Bible said in the book of 2 Peter that God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. The book of Corinthians said, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has revealed or given to us, you've got to understand that God has his own inventory. And it's not used goods, it's new goods. The Bible said, behold, I do new things. God is about to do something new for you. And he's going to blow your mind. Whatever you're thinking about doing, whatever you're thinking about acquiring, I want you to think bigger. Your thoughts are too small. God is getting ready to blow your mind. Hallelujah. And I'm believing with you. I'm standing with you. I'm agreeing with you that those things that God is revealing to you are going to come to pass in its set time. The Bible said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, and all these things shall be. That is an irrefutable promise. Let the devil try to get in God's way. God will run him over. Let your enemy try to get in God's way. God is going to run your enemies over. You shall have these things, and they shall be added unto you. Your days of working by the sweat of your brow is over. Your days of working from nine to faint is over. God is going to take the struggle out of your labor. I decree and declare that the economic burdens are being lifted even as we speak. He's going to take the struggle out of it. Verse number 34 says, take no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Stop worrying. If you're going to worry, don't pray. But if you're going to pray, don't worry. One cancels out the other. Sufficient unto the days is the evil thereof. This text speaks to me at a very deep level. It shows to shows me how to be qualified. Hallelujah. To be multiplied and to be glorified. It speaks to me on how I can get God's attention and his favor, but not only God's attention and God's favor, but also the attention and favor of man. What does it mean when God said, but seek ye first? What does first mean? It means to come before all others and be foremost, be foremost in time, be foremost in order be foremost in consideration, be foremost in position, be foremost in a rank, be foremost in importance. First speaks to being the earliest in time, the earliest in preference, the earliest in sequence, the earliest in honor. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. If you can turn there with me, please. Even as we talk about giving God the position of honor, where you place God first in everything that you do. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10 says, if you're going to honor the Lord, here's how you honor him. Honor the Lord with your wealth. I decree and declare that the spirit of lack is broken from all for your life. I'm going to say it one more time. Hallelujah, your amen is suspicious this morning. Let me just say, that I have no hidden agenda. I'm not setting anybody up because if this revelation, hallelujah, is not yours, I'm going to give you permission not to do anything with it. But this is the revelation that broke poverty from off of my life. It wasn't a job. It wasn't a degree. It wasn't money. It wasn't position. It was this revelation. And I'm standing with all sincerity. Why is this message important? We all struggle in three areas. Number one, we struggle physiologically. Hallelujah, we're struggling. Hallelujah, to maintain our health. 
And if it's not our physical health, it's our mental health that we're struggling to maintain. Number two, we struggle relationally. Hallelujah. If we have good relationships, hallelujah. If you have faithful friends, if you have loyal friends, hallelujah, that's a blessing because many, many people are hurting because they've been disappointed, hallelujah, by family and friends that have betrayed them and if you have friends you want to hang on to them and if you don't have friends you're praying that God will give you people that are loyal we struggle we struggle in our marriage we struggle parenting we struggle in so many areas relationally and then thirdly we struggle financially if we have money most people worry about keeping it and if you don't have money you want to pray and ask God to give it to you but there is a struggle that unifies all of us hallelujah but I feel hallelujah that one of the greatest struggles that humanity has is having sufficient capital hallelujah to discharge hallelujah their obligations their financial obligations and I begin to pray God if your people had more they'll be able to give more. The reason why during offering times most people, hallelujah, don't activate their faith because you have given and you have given and you haven't seen anything in return. But let me say this, hallelujah, one more time and I decree it and I declare it and I prophesy it and I quicken it and I call it to life by the word, by the the blood by the spirit. Your days of struggling financially are over. You've got to believe me. I have no hidden agenda in preaching this only to bless you. When we talk about finances, when we talk about tithe, when we talk about offering, when we talk about vows, when we talk about alms, we very seldom hear it from the context of this being a kingdom strategy. But this is a strategy. I had gotten it all wrong. I had considered these things that they were something that would just benefit the church. But the devil is a liar. The day I came into revelation of what God was doing and how I can use this for my financial benefit. Hallelujah, a light bulb came on. Things begin to turn around. I decree and declare a financial turnaround in your life, in your business, in your ministry, in your investment. You are not running after money. Money is going to run after you. If you want, hallelujah, to be financially independent, you've got to have first things first. Did I give you my title? My title today is first things first. When you put God first, he will put you first. The Bible said, honor him with your wealth. Watch this. It is assumed that you are wealthy. When God wrote this, the assumption was that he was not talking to people that lived in the realm of poverty. He was talking about people who lived in the realm of wealth. I decree and declare God is shifting your financial status. You may have to trust God by faith until your death declarations become a reality, but I decree that you are no longer living in the realm of poverty. 
you are now being promoted into a new realm. You live in the realm of wealth. The Bible said that God not only gives you power over all the power of the enemy, he gives you power to get wealth. I decree and declare 2016 a year for you to get wealth. You are not waiting for someone, hallelujah, to give it to you. To get wealth simply means that you are going to create wealth. I decree and declare, can I do that for you? That wealth and riches shall be in your house. The Bible says you're going to be a wealth creator. You are not only going to be a wealth creator, you're going to be a magnet of wealth. This is not just money. Anybody can make money. But those of us that are born again, God said, I'm going to open up the heavens to give a rain in its season. I'm going to bless, hallelujah, your land. I'm going to bless your hands. I decree and declare your hands are blessed. Whatever you touch shall turn into prophetic gold. I prophesy success. Your days of non-productivity are over. Your days of producing are here. You're going to produce your best work. You're going to be promoted as a result of your work. You're going to progress at the result of your work. And you're going to prosper as a result of your work. I decree and declare your days of waiting for a benefactor is over. I decree your days of begging are over. You are now a benefactor. I decree and declare with the wealth that is coming to you, you're going to lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. I can't wait to give you my testimony. As a result of this revelation, I know where you are. And I'm coming to charge your faith that when God tells you, to honor him with his with your wealth. He said not only with your wealth with your first fruits of all your produce then your barns will be filled with plenty and your wet vet shall burst forth with wine. The Bible says that when you give God your first fruit you honor God and you provide the opportunity for God to honor you by giving you affluence. I decree and declare that this is the year you will not only have influence, you're going to have affluence. God is turning around our finances. The Bible indicates, hallelujah, that we should honor him with our first fruit, the first individual. Hallelujah, in the Bible, hallelujah, to give his first fruit, gave it by revelation. When he gave the first fruit, it would be generations later before the nation of Israel, hallelujah, would institutionalize, hallelujah, the first fruit. How is it that Abel, when no one else was giving first fruit, how is it that he picked the revelation up? I believe that those of us, hallelujah, that are sincere about honoring God, we are going to hear what other people don't hear. And we're going to see what other people don't see. Can I prophesy over your eyes? I decree today that the eyes of your understanding is being enlightened. 
I command your spiritual eyes to open. I decree you're going to see opportunities that others will overlook. They're going to overlook the opportunity, but God is going to show you and reveal to you in the midst of your greatest trial, in the midst of your greatest challenge, God is going to reveal to you opportunities. Opportunities always come disguised. It comes disguised as a problem. Those of you that are in the middle of an economic or financial problem and you're going through a hardship, I command your eyes to open because in the middle of that is an opportunity for you to break through. I decree this week financial breakthroughs, economic breakthroughs, and they're going to happen to you even swiftly and suddenly. The Bible said, hallelujah, that Abel would be the first one to give the first fruit. If you would turn with me to Hebrews 11, hallelujah, one to four. The Bible said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report through faith we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God so the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear by faith Abel offered God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by the which he obtained witness that he was righteous God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh in other words Abel did something to ensure that history recorded his name and humanity would never forget that there once lived a man by the name of Abel it was Winston Churchill that said history shall be kind to me because I intend to write it but I've changed that quote and I say history shall be kind to me because God has already written it he said I know the thoughts I think towards you thoughts of good and not of evil I decree and declare that the anointing of a history maker is coming upon you this morning. You are going to make history. You're going to be the first millionaire in your family. You're going to be the first billionaire in your family. I prophesy it. I decree it. I declare it. And it cannot be otherwise. Abel was the first person recorded in the Bible that gave his first fruit. Obviously, he gave it by revelation and by faith because, like I said, it would be several generations before the first fruit would be institutionalized as a spiritual law and observed by the nation Israel. When you give your first fruit, you've got to give it by faith. Turn with me to Romans 14, verse 22 and 23. Romans 14, 22 and 23. The Bible says, Has thou faith? Have it, in, have it to thyself before God. And I like what it says. It's one thing for you to have faith in God. But how many of us have faith in whom God? God has called us to be. Many of us grew up in dysfunctional homes because the enemy wanted to undermine your greatness. But the days of being undermined is over. 
<laughs> you know you're great. There is something on the inside of you that keeps telling you that there's something more. God won't give you thirst if he didn't have water for you to drink. God would not give you hunger if he didn't give you food to eat by virtue of the fact that you feel that there is something more. Let me know that there is something more. I can't explain to anybody what I was feeling at eight years old. Sitting in poverty, something was telling me that you would have a better life. I couldn't articulate it. All I know is that there was something moving. Hallelujah. Through me, biochemically, bioelectrically. Because that is what purpose is all about. You are purpose built. You are genetically programmed to fulfill something specific. This is why even at your age, you refuse to settle. You get frustrated when people belittle you. But don't let the devil cause you to cheapen yourself or to devalue yourself or to depreciate yourself. Stop trying to fit in by lowering your standards and lowering your expectations. You are God's workmanship, fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to believe it. You got to behave it in order to become it. God said you are the head. You're not the tail. You're above only. You are not beneath. You are in the front. You're not in the back. You got to believe me when I tell you you are not an accident. You are not an incident. You are not a coincidence. Your life was created on purpose for a purpose. You are somebody special. God made you the way you are for a reason. Many people have preached it. Many people have spoken it. But it's worth reiterating it. Hallelujah. I don't care how much you've read it. How much you heard it. It bears repeating in the entire world. There is no one like you. Meditate on this for a moment. That means your worth is what God decides. And if you are unique, you got to understand that man cannot put a price tag on you. You are not just working huh, to have a salary. That salary is only your tip. That is not what you're worth. You are on that job to hone your skills, to develop your gifts and talents so that when you execute it in the marketplace, men will see your good works and you will not only glorify God which is in heaven you will prosper as a result of it you've got to understand that God wants to build your self esteem by building your self image what is man that thou art mindful of him the son of men that thou should visit him you made us a little lower than angels God didn't make you a little higher than animals he made you a little lower than angels. You are somebody special, somebody important, somebody powerful. People do not reject you because of your inferiority. They reject you because of your superiority. They know how powerful you are. They want you to believe 
that you're not as gifted, you're not as powerful, you're not as beautiful as you really are just because they're insecure with themselves. It doesn't mean that you got to give up your power, you got to give up your talent just to be liked by them. I tell everybody all the time, don't get my confidence entangled with your inferiority complex. I'm not going to dumb down because you feel inferior. In fact, I'm going to cry aloud. I'm going to spear not. I've discovered apostle people that call other people arrogant. They call you arrogant when they know that you know that they know that you're better than them. You're smarter than them. You're more gifted than them. You're more talented than them. Why should I bend down and bow down and blend in to someone that doesn't have the capacity for you. You've got to understand when God gives you a revelation of who you are, when God gives you a revelation of strategies to increase you financially, the people that used to pray for your breakthrough will not pray anymore. We seem to tend to like people that are needy but your days of needing people to prop you up and to stroke you, those days are over. You're going to be able to rise up like David had said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made and marvelous are thy works. The Bible talks about Abel having confidence and faith to act Activate a principle. He gave God the first fruit offering in demonstration of his faith in God. Jehovah Jireh, the source of his resource. Jehovah Jireh is not only the one that supplies all your needs. He's the source of your resource. When your source dries up, you still you have your resource. Your job is not your resource. Your degree is not your resource. Your salary is not your resource. Your wage is not your resource. God himself is your resource. And when you put God first, when you honor the Lord with your first fruits, God honors you. When you make God first, he will make you first. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 4, by faith Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Let's look in Genesis chapter 4. Hallelujah to see what the Bible says. The Bible says, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and beer came and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bear his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain bought the fruit of the ground and offering. So we're establishing the fact that Cain gave an offering. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and and sisters, the average church member is settled on the fact that we should bring an offering. We don't mind giving offerings, but it's time for you to go to the next level and understand that the giving of offerings, hallelujah, opens a door, hallelujah, for God to begin to give you a financial breakthrough through, but there's something 
something else that you need to add. I've discovered it's fine when we ask for offering, but the average church member now gets a little antsy when we begin to introduce the tithe and the first fruits. But something happened in the garden while Cain was given his offering. God gave Abel another revelation. Verse number four. And Abel, he also, hallelujah, gave or bought the firstling of his flock and the first fruit of the fat thereof. So look at this. The Bible said Abel also, that means he bought his offering. But in addition to his offering, he bought the first link. And in addition to the first link, he bought the fat thereof. In that same service, God gave Abel a revelation that captured the heart of God, that Activated favor. I decree this morning, God is going to activate his favor upon you. I decree and declare, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, as long as I'm decreeing, there is no uh, hallelujah strings attached. I'm not setting you up for anything. Learn how to receive it. Your life will change. Learn how to believe it. Learn how to pull it down. Tell your neighbor if you don't want. Hallelujah, you're serving a favor. I'm going to take mine and yours too. I decreed and declared supernatural favor from today to onward all through 2016 I decree you're going to have supernatural favor you're going to have favor with bankers favor with doctors you're going to be the favorite employee you're going to be the favorite business I decree favor every day you wake up you're going to wake up to unlimited unlimited uncontrollable, uncommon favor. Favor is going to go before you. You're going to have favor behind you. Favor on your right hand. Favor on your left hand. Favor beneath you. Favor above you. Favor when you wake up. Favor when you go to bed. Favor will encompass you in the name of Jesus like a shield. You're going to be the favorite auntie. You're going to be the favorite uncle. You're going to be the favorite grandchild. You're going to be the favorite. Hallelujah. In your family, you are going to walk out of here with favor. You got to understand that by revelation, Abel added to his offering the first fruit and his tithe because I'm not talking about the tithe. Permit me to park it to the side. God gave him a revelation and the Bible said in a verse number four the Lord had respect to Abel and to his offering. God blessed his offering because of the first fruit but unto Cain and to his offering he had no respect and Cain was was very wroth and his countenance fell and the Lord said to Cain why art thou wroth and why is thy countenance fallen if thou doest well shalt thou not be accepted the word accepted comes from a Hebrew word Saif it means elevated it means exalted it means to be dignified. It means to swell. It means to grow big. When Abel gave God his first fruit, something was activated. In the realm of the spirit, God gave him favor. But God not only gave him favor, 
God made him famous. God made him illustrious. God made him bigger than life. God distinguished him. God made him renowned, esteemed. God gave him prominence, nobility, no worthiness. God made him great. God made him influential. God gave him prestige. God gave him affluence. God gave him influence. God made him noteworthy. God gave him celebration. God gave him prominence. God made him well known. God exalted him. God branded him. God promoted him. I decree and declare this morning as you have the revelation of the first fruit, I decree and declare God will be the market specialist for your business, for your ministry. This is the last day you're going to have to print business card. Your name is great in the marketplace. You are going to be number one. You are no longer going to have to drop people's name. People are going to drop your name. In other words, the first fruits opens up a door that ushers you into a realm of social prominence and you gain celebrity status. Don't be afraid of the word celebrity. Celebrity means a person that is celebrated. Your days of being tolerated are over. Your days of being esteemed is here. People will no longer overlook your greatness, overlook your giftedness. You're gaining celebrity status. This is the intention of giving the first fruits. It gives God something to work with. Isaiah 61 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because God has anointed me to preach the gospel. Hallelujah, good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to buy the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives. Your days of being financially bound are over. God's getting ready to liberate your purse. He's getting ready to break the curse off your purse. He's getting ready to bring you out of debt. He's getting ready to elevate your thinking. You are now thinking like a millionaire. You are now thinking like a billionaire. You are now thinking like an immobile ear. The anointing of God is upon you. He has also opened up the prison doors to them that are bound. You will no longer be bound. You will no longer be broke. You will no longer be broken. Your days of broke are over. Your days of begging are over. God is reversing the financial curse on your purse. He said to a point unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You got to understand that word praise is not an active word. It is a passive word. It's not what you do. It's what you receive. People are about to praise you. People are about to esteem you. People are about to celebrate you. You are about to have celebrity status. And you will not have to sell your soul to do it. The moment you have a revelation of the first fruits and you put God first, something superior, something incredible, 
happened for you in the realm of the spirit, God throws the curtain of obscurity wide open. You come out, you rise, you shine. It's your day for shining, for your light has come. You will no longer live in obscurity. God will elevate you. God is your PR specialist. He's promoting you. People that don't know you will hear about you. God will whisper your name in the air of powerful people because they will see you bigger than life. The Bible contrasts Abel with Cain. Cain refused to give the first fruits and the devil himself was waiting around the corner. God said, you have the same opportunity I want to give you. How many of you know that the devil always tempts you to give the inferior gift? But the Bible said, by faith, Abel gave a more excellent, a superior sacrifice. You've got to understand when we talk about sacrifice, we are not talking about you giving God something you don't want to release. But when you have the revelation and when you understand the purpose of the first fruit, you'll give it willingly because you understand that the first fruit is a strategy to bring you into greatness, to bring you into prominence, to bring you into influence, to bring you into affluence. No wonder the devil fought me. No wonder the devil's fighting you. He's fighting you because he knows the correlation between the first fruit and your wealth. But the devil can go to hell after all the hell I've been through. I'm going to give my first fruit. I'm going to learn the law of first things first. Yes, yes, yes. Sit down. My time is up. Abel offered God a more excellent sacrifice. Oh my God. It was November. In November, I was frustrated. And just like you all, you know, I started getting these letters about giving first fruit. And I felt like you're insulting my intelligence. Because if you want money, just say money. Just, just don't set me up. And that was because the average person and the average preacher believes that the first fruit is the same thing as an offering when it's not. An offering does one thing in the realm of the spirit. Tithe does something else. Vows does something else for you. But the first fruit is your gateway to favor, fortune, and future success and prosperity. And in as much as I sat where you sat, and I got suspicious, and I really did, I began to study it out, and I had an aha moment. This was November when I was preparing for January's assignments. When I found out about the first fruit, I couldn't wait for January. I had to give it in November. I was so excited in November. I said, God, if this is true, then I'm going to give my first fruit. Ezekiel 44, 30 says, the first fruit of all the first of all the first fruits of all kind 
and every offering of all kinds from all your offerings shall belong to the priest. You shall also give the priest the first of your dough. So we're talking about the first fruit and the tithe, both of them. But because I'm going to part the tithe to the side and not deal with the tithe, just the first fruit, I'm going to encourage each one of you just to consider this. Consider giving God your first fruit. I'm not talking about tithe. <clears throat> the first fruit was given at the beginning of the year. For the Jews, it would be the head of the, head of the year. It would be the first of the harvest. <clears throat> but I'm Christian, so the first of the year would be in January. The first month of the year would be January. I'm going to tell you how this really blessed my life. How I gave it, but I gave it with resentment. And I'm, the un I'm very honest. I'm the truth girl. I just, I'm very transparent. I know why you're struggling. Because I sat there. I just want to give you the revelation. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and thy presses shall burst with new wine. According to this text, there's a direct correlation between wealth, prosperity, financial success, and abundance and the first fruit. There's a direct positive correlation. Your barns will be filled with plenty and your presence shall burst out with new wine. That speaks of financial and spiritual success. Abel honored God when he gave the first fruit, and God honored him. And this is why his brother was jealous. This is why his brother killed him. What God was saying to his brother, look, there's room at the top for everyone. You don't have to be jealous of anyone. If you do well, I'm going to promote you. But if you don't, sin lies at the door. The enemy, it defaults. You default into an arena where the enemy takes control of your financial destiny. It's like putting, going, taking one step forward and three steps backwards. And it, it happens in cycles. But I decree and declare 2016... The cycle is broken. <laughs> Hebrews 11 and 4, by faith, by faith. When you give your first fruit, you got to give by faith. The Bible said whatever is not of faith is sin. Sin lies at the door. Abel gave by faith, but his brother resented it. Because God elevated him, elevated Abel, and he became the most powerful name. When we deal with the first fruit, we're dealing with God making you a history maker. I decree and declare 2016 the year of history makers. The year 2016 where you will live the life of your dreams. God will change how people look at you, how people view you. And he'll give you a name. What image comes to your mind when you hear, hear Stephen Jobs? Or, or Portia? Or Bentley? Or Chaka Zulu? Or Gandhi? Or Mother Teresa? Or Martin Luther King? or Desmond Tutu, or Nelson Mandela, or Oprah Winfrey, or Paul the Apostle, or Barack Obama, or Tiger Woods, Stephen Hawkins, Einstein, Will Smith, Joyce Myers, T.D. Jakes, Buddha, Beyonce, Eminem, Bieber, Venus and Serena, Yolanda Adams. What, what, what image comes to your mind? Bill Gates, Idi Amin, Solomon. And Jesus, all of these people rose from out of obscurity into prominence. They had a good name. 
A good name opens doors for you. It creates impressive networks. It grants you favor. It makes people offer you opportunities. The game comes to you. People want to do business with you. People want to buy your products. When you give your first fruit, God removes the stigma attached to your name. Mary Magdalene, Rahab. People recalled their past, but they still wanted to do business with these people. When you give your first fruit, God removes the stigma from your family name. God removes the false perception, limiting expectations, so that people see you for who you really are. You're smart. You're intelligent. Intelligent. You're gifted. You're powerful. You're anointed. The first fruit, the enemy fights because he knows the blessing attached to it. November, I began to pre prepare for this message. And I said to God, God, I can't wait until January. I got it. I want to give my first fruit now. So I gave it in November as my full salary. Dr. Trim, how does the first fruit work? The first fruit, you give it once, once every year, at the beginning of the year. It's not your tithe. You don't back the first fruit out of your tithe. You give your tithe, you give your offering, you give your first fruit. So that means that that's your first week salary. Because if the first is blessed, it blesses the whole rest of it. The first fruit, you attach yourself to Jehovah Jireh, the source of your resource. So even if your source dries up, you still have your resource. So what if I get paid once a month? At the end of the month, you back out one week's salary and you give that whole week's salary. What if I get paid twice a month? When you get your first paycheck, you back out the entire week's salary. Number two, I own real estate, so I have people that rent. So what I did in addition to my entire salary, and I did the entire, the next thing I did was I took the entire month's rent of my property, the entire month, and I gave all of that to God. So let me share with you what happened recently. After in the end of November, I get this call, and this is, a, this is just the most amazing thing. In the call, they said, you don't know us, but we're calling from Brazil. <laughs> they said, we need you to come to Brazil. Here's what we're setting up for you. You're gonna do some meetings, but that's not all you're doing. We're currently meeting with the Brazilian government, the Senate, and one of the senators. We want to make you an ambassador of goodwill for Brazil. That's not all. I can't even speak Portuguese. They said, we believe in you so much that the Lord dropped you in our spirit. And what we're going to do, we want you to become the number one television personality. So we've already bought the time. We, we have already paid a staff for filming, for editing, for producing all of your work. You will not have to pay a dollar. And we're going to beam you all across Brazil as the number one television personality. Do you know how expensive TV is? That's expensive real estate. I was on TV only for 30 minutes on a Sunday, 28 minutes, television 28 minutes. It cost me 30, this is on the low end, it cost me $35,000 a month. 
That's the low end. That's doing it the cheapest way I possibly call it, could. $35,000 a month. <laughs> and you want me to be seduced not to pay my first fruit. I could tell you some more things. I walked in this place the other day. And I said, oh my goodness, that Bentley looks beautiful. But I would never buy one. If I drive a Bentley, somebody's going to have to buy it for me. They said, don't worry about it, it's done. That doesn't excite you because they're things. But I'm not pursuing things. Things are pursuing me. Something as simple as having a thought. Listen to this. Can I just give you a few more testimonies? Firstly, the Bible said you will lend to many nations. So when I go into Brazil, Brazil is an emerging economy. So that means the, G, the G7, G12, G20 is eyeballing them because it's an upcoming economy. So I decided that I'm going to sell a technology to the government of Brazil when I go down there. Cha-ching. Yes. <laughs> Wherever you can find a problem, you find opportunities to progress. Hmm. There's some more I want to tell you, but I'm going to give you two simple ones. Right now, as soon as I imagine something or think something, it happens. So I was flying to uh, California. In my mind, I said, oh, I need another vanity bag. You know the bags that you put your toiletries in? I said, I need another one, something as simple. But I didn't tell anybody. I just flew in. It was a thought. Oh, I got to get another vanity bag. This one is getting rough and rugged. I need another one. When I get there, I see this gift bag, and I open it up inside there's a vanity bag. I'm thinking, oh, I forgot I use this kind of mattifier for my face so that I don't look, look greasy when I'm on film. So I use a mattifier to keep the grease down. And it's a specific mattifier that I use. So I go, I fly to another church. When I get there, the pastor's wife said, oh, Dr. Trim, I'm so sorry. Please accept my forgiveness. I bought you this little gift. I'm almost embarrassed to give it to you, but here you go. I open it up, and there's two tubes of mattifier, the exact. <laughs> but seek ye first. First things first, the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Just before I receive your offering and your tithe, just before I do, can I do one thing? Can I break the spirit of frustration off of you? I've been there. How many of you believe, but you have some unbelief? And, and you become indifferent. Put your hand up. I know what that feels like. Where, where you're afraid to believe anymore. Throw your hand up. I, I know I've been there. And I know what that feels like. Can we start right there? get that broken off of you so that now we could build your faith? Can we do that? All right. Stand to your feet, our Father and our God, right now in the name of Jesus. We are standing because we've come through a season of frustration where, where, where we wrestle. God, does this thing really work? And why the first fruit? And does the tithe really work? And how does that benefit my life? I see it how it benefits the church, but how does it benefit my life? I decree and declare the enemy will not seduce you any longer. That through the anointing of God, the spirit of frustration is lifted. That you are going to be a man and a woman of faith. I decree and declare you are coming into a season where everything that you do, you will do it by faith and will activate the promises associated with that particular principle. I call you blessed. I decree breakthroughs financially. 
I decree that as you give, you will walk away from the office of the altar and you will have these witty ideas and then you will have faith to activate the ideas. I decree you are an idea generator. I decree you are a wealth creator. I decree you are a money magnet. That your days of working but not seeing anything at the end of the week for all of the expansion of the enemy, those uh, energy, those days are over. I call you blessed. I call you anointed. I decree that the burden is lifted. You're going to believe again. You're going to trust again that the heavens are open over your life. In Jesus' name, amen. Please sit down. Please sit down. I'm going to do one more thing. Those of you that are tithers and you became indifferent and you got frustrated and you, you either didn't pay all of your tithe or you touched the tithe or you withheld the tithe, listen to me carefully. You're never under a curse. Cursed is the man that hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham falls upon the Gentiles. So you're never under a curse, but your finances are. You could be under a financial curse because of it. So I, a curse is the natural outcome of an act of disobedience. A blessing is the natural outcome of an act of obedience. God said, bring all the tithe into my house. Some of us have touched the tithe because we needed it. We had a hard year, 2015. We need to pay our mortgage. We need to pay our car note. But today, I believe that God wants me to release the anointing to break the curse off of your purse. This is the poorest you will ever be. If you are here and you touch the tithe, and listen, don't restrain yourself from standing up because you believe that you're the only one that's gonna be standing up. A lot of people are gonna be standing up. I'd rather have the demons out and people talking about than have the demons in and nobody knows. Don't hide under this. Listen, if you can't come to the church to get it broken, where are you gonna go? We're here to service you. Just as long as you can be convicted, you will not be condemned. Just as long as the Holy Spirit can still convict you. The moment you sit in church and you lose that thing where the Holy Spirit convicts you, you're in a bad state. If you're convicted, I'm going to give you an opportunity to start all over fresh today. If you touched a tithe in 2015, for whatever reason, Sometimes you touch it and you promise you're going to give it back, but you never gave it back. You might have forgotten it. You might have needed it for your children's teeth. I don't know. But I'm only counting to three. You could sit down if you want, or you can stand up and have a new beginning. Those of you that touched the tide, didn't pay the tide for whatever reason, I want this to be a day of new beginning for you. So let's get it broken. One, stand up. Two, there you go. 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 There's two more that needs to stand up. Just stand up. Three. Raise your hands. Never, never, ever allow the enemy to condemn you. Just as long as you're convicted. We don't condemn you. We're here to put you back on your feet. Raise your hands, look this way, don't have your head hanging down, nothing to be embarrassed about. We do what we know how to do until we know how to do better, amen? Praise God. Our Father and our God, we're standing. You said you desire truth in the inward part. Truth is liberating us even now. We want to be a blessing to the ministry, God, and to financially underwrite the budget of the church. That's what we really want to do. But in our own lives, we are struggling. We struggle with the revelation. We struggle with really understanding how this benefits us. We struggle with our finances. We struggle with paying our bills. We struggle, Father, for, with maintaining faith. But today, I thank you for the anointing that's breaking yokes right now. I decree and declare right where you stand, you are being restored. I decree that your past is past, that you are forgetting those things which are behind. Today is a day of new beginning. The old has passed away. Behold, the new is here. Would you repeat after me, Lord Jesus? Please forgive me for touching the tie. I did it, and I want to admit it. But now, God, 
I want to turn over a new leaf on life. I believe your word. I am a tither and I receive forgiveness right now. Let the heavens over my life be open in the name of Jesus. And God, I promise you, I will never, no never, touch the tithe again in Jesus' name. Put your hand up now, Father, according to the anointing and the power vested in me, I decree and declare the, the curse over our purses are broken. I decree, Father, that we are going into a new realm of financial breakthrough, financial competence. I decree the anointing of a millionaire is falling upon us. I decree you will give us favor. I decree that this is the poorest we will ever be. I thank you now, Father, that you will bless us with strategies that we indeed will be a giver and never a lender and never a borrower. We will be lenders and never borrowers. Father, you will bless the work of our hand. I decree that this is the poorest you will ever be. I speak increase into your wallet. I speak increase into your bank account, your savings account, your investment. I decree and declare you will live in debt-free houses. You will drive debt-free cars. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus, a fresh anointing for giving comes upon you in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead and praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Take your seat. We're getting ready to receive your tithe, your offering, and your first fruit. Now I'm going to do the first, I'm going to do the first things first. Those of you that were blessed this morning. How many of you were blessed this morning and you really begin to have an understanding? What I want to do is to invite you to give your first fruit. Now, um, some of you can give it today and some of you will have to wait for the end of the month. So I want two envelopes. I want a first fruit envelope. And those of you that would say, Dr. Trim, I need to give my first fruit and I'm beginning to understand what the first fruit is all about. It is not my tithe, but I intend to give my first fruit. I want you to stand, just stand. I intend to give my first fruit. No pressure, you're gonna give by revelation. I'm gonna give it. It may not be now, but this is the power of intention. When you intend to do something, heaven conspires with earth to bring the resources for you to do it. Everybody look this way. I want you to give by faith and by revelation. This is something that you want to give. Dr. Trim, I got the revelation and I want to give it. If you are standing and you don't have the revelation, you're not gonna give it by faith and you don't wanna give it, I'm gonna give you permission to sit down. When you give at this level, you're giving in the realm of faith something supernaturally happens to you. Is this what you want to do? Are you doing it by faith? Are you doing it by revelation? Very good. Everyone, you should have two envelopes. The first one is your first fruit envelope. Please make sure you have two. Keep standing. The usher's going to give it to you. If you don't have two envelopes, put your hand up and they will service you. Just put your hand up. They will see you. Keep your hand up. They're running. They're rushing. Dr. Trim, tell me one more time, what is my first fruit? Your first week's salary, all of it. First week's salary. What else is your first fruit? If you have a business, that's gonna be your first week's um, profit. The first week profit. If you own real estate, that's the first week rent. When, you're, when, when the people who rent or lease your property give you that check, you give the whole thing to God. Give the whole thing. Watch what God will do. Watch, watch, watch. At the end of this year, I'm going to have the most amazing testimonies. But so will you. When I come back, I want to hear it. When you walk out of here, don't chase money. Chase ideas. Ask God, give me an idea, give me an idea. And then I'm going to ask God to give you the faith and the courage. Some of you could give your first fruit this morning. 
give it. You can use your credit cards, thank God. You can write a check, you can give cash. But give your first fruit. Secondly, I want everyone in here that's a believer to give your tithes. Those of you that touch the tithe, start giving your tithe this morning. But last but not least, everyone that can in the congregation, this is the anointing of Abel that is being released. You're going to give your offering, you're going to give your first fruit, you're going to give your tithe, and I'm excited about it. The offering I want you to give this morning, just by revelation, is $216. Not $2,016, $216. Why? Because in 2016, you're going to give a tenth of it, 216, as opposed to 2016. I'm believing that God is going to make us history makers. And this is my prayer over you. You're going to be a trendsetter. You're going to set new trends. And I pray this over not only you, but your husband your wife, your son, your daughter. Your sons are coming out of prison. Your daughters are going to come out of the street. And this is the year that is going to happen. So this morning, we're going to tithe over 2016. We're going to give 216, 216 dollars in the offering. Now, those of you that are sitting here and you're in between blessing, look this way. If you're in between blessing, I want you to give your best offering plus $2.16. So on top of your regular offering, I want you to add an additional $2.16. Those of you that can and will, you're going to give a seed, your offering of 216 those of you that stood and had the curse broken from off of you, you're paying your tithe. And then you're giving your first fruit. There are some that can give their first fruit today. But the others, you're going to do an IOU. So if you don't have your first fruit now, you're going to get paid at the end of the month. I want you to do an IOU. And I, put, I want you to put the amount there. So that when apostle stands up or prophetess stands up, to receive your first fruit at the end of the month or the, or the first of February, depending on what, what, what the end, when the end of the month falls, he'll receive your first fruit. Amen? How many of you were blessed this morning? How many of you gave a, got a greater understanding? In Jesus' name. We're going to invite Apostle back to come and receive. I have mine, my...